Today we're going to talk about polynomial equations from graphs and in behavior. Multiplicity refers to the number of times a number is a zero in a polynomial equation. Take this equation right here. Now it's, our, it's factored, but it could be all multiplied out. It'd be the same equation. It'd have the same zeros. Notice how that here, negative 2 is a 0 because negative 2 plus 2 is 0, 0 cubed to be 0, and 0 times all of that stuff would make y 0. So negative 2 has multiplicity 3 because x plus 2 is a factor 3 times. Remember that x plus 2 quantity cubed is x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. And that solution of negative 2, the 0 of negative 2, it occurs 3 times because of the power of 3. Positive 3, this is in the second one right here, 3 minus 3 is 0, and 0 squared would be 0, and I multiply 0 times all those things, and I get y is 0. So 3 is a 0, and it has multiplicity 2, again, because the factor x minus 3 occurs twice. This is x minus 3 quantity squared, or x minus 3 times x minus 3. 5 has multiplicity 1, because you can think like there's a power of 1 there, and the, the 0, 5 occurs once. Now once we understand what multiplicity is, we can talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra, in particular the second part. Every polynomial function of degree n greater than or equal to 1 has at least one zero, where zero may be a complex number. And the important one here for us, the corollary, which just means a theorem that follows a theorem. Every polynomial function of degree n greater than or equal to 1 has exactly n zeros, but that includes multiplicities. A quadratic, then, has two zeros, but remember how we can solve a quadratic and get one solution? That just means that one solution occurs twice. It has multiplicity two. If I have a cubic, I know it has three zeros. Again, they could be irrational. Irrationals come in pairs, so you'd have maybe two irrational and one rational but it has three zeros, and that includes multiplicities. Or a quartic, a fourth power, would have four zeros. However, it is possible that it has one zero that occurs four times. There's, it's to the fourth power. It has multiplicity four. We'll have examples of this in just a few minutes. We are also going to talk about in behavior. In behavior is a way to describe what a graph does as x approaches negative infinity and positive infinity. Take a look at all these even powers. We know that y equal x squared is a quadratic. A quadratic makes that shape of a parabola. It's this one right here. But notice that y equal x to the 4th and y equal x to the 6th and y equal x to the 10th make the same general shape. Any even power, like y equal x to the 20th, will make that same general shape kind of like a parabola. And if I add some other pieces to that, plus 5x squared minus 2x and so on, what will happen is there will be more zeros in here, but the end behavior ends up being the same. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. This equation is actually a quartic. Take a look at the way I typed it in, though. It's not obvious, maybe, immediately that it's a quartic, but if I were to FOIL this out, in this first set of parentheses, I'd end up with an x squared. In the second set of parentheses, I end up with an x squared. And x squared times x squared would make a highest power of x to the fourth. The end behavior is the same as of a parabola. Yeah, there's this stuff in the middle, but remember what a parabola looks like? It has that round shape at the bottom. 
as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. It gets larger and larger. And as x goes to positive infinity, y also goes to positive infinity. And that's what we're talking about when we say in behavior. The in behavior of any even power is going to be the same unless I reflect it over the x-axis. The thing to keep in mind here is that any even power, any equation with highest degree that is even, will make that same general shape. Now, there, again, there can be stuff going on in the middle here, but the in behavior is the same. Here's some equations with odd powers. The thing to keep in mind is they also make the same general shape. A cubic makes that shape that looks like that. Notice that x cubed, y equal x to the fifth, and y equal x to the seventh make a very similar shape. We can expect then every odd power to have that same general shape. And I can move it left and right. I can translate it or shift it. I can move it up and down. I can reflect it, which will flip it over the x-axis. We'll see examples of that shortly. But I expect that same in behavior. What is the in behavior? As x approaches positive infinity, means as I go to the right, y goes to positive infinity. It goes up forever. And as x approaches negative infinity on the left, as I'm going this direction, y goes down. In other words, y goes to negative infinity. And this is how we describe in behavior. Think of x going to positive infinity as going to the right, y going to positive infinity as y going up, x approaching negative infinity as going to the left, and y going to negative infinity as going down. Notice how this original cubic here, just to remind you, the original cubic is the dotted line right here. that when I reflect it and I say y equal negative x cubed, every y value is the opposite. A y value at negative 8 becomes a positive y value when it, when it becomes the opposite and goes up to positive 8. It's reflected over the x-axis. Notice that changes the end behavior. So the reflected line, the line in blue, as x goes to positive infinity, as I go to the right, y goes down, y goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to the left, that means as x goes to negative infinity, y goes up, y goes to positive infinity. Notice the parabola. The original dotted line is y equal x squared. The reflected line, where every y value is the opposite, the end behavior changes when you reflect it. In this case, as x goes to the right, to positive infinity, as I go this direction, y decreases, y goes to negative infinity. And as I go to the left on the x-axis, as x goes to negative infinity, y goes down. y goes to negative infinity also. Let's talk about multiplicity again. First, though, notice that this is a cubic. This x here is squared. If I foiled it out, times another x would end up making a cubic. The end behavior here would be exactly the same as a normal cubic, though the graph looks a bit different. The thing I want to point out, look how this negative 2 
has multiplicity of one. It is a zero once. There it is. Notice how the line just crosses there. When you have multiplicity one, that's what happens. It just crosses right through. Notice how three has multiplicity two because x minus three is a factor twice. X minus three quantity squared is X minus three times X minus three, meaning three is a zero twice. It has multiplicity two. Take a look at that right there and notice something. When a number has even multiplicity, what you get is in the graph, a piece of that graph kind of looks like a parabola. It makes that U shape. And that's always the case. So when you see that a number has even multiplicity, multiplicity two or four or six or eight or 10 or so on, you know that it makes a little mini parabola and comes down and touches the x-axis, it's a zero. That parabola shape I'm talking about right here tells you that that zero has even multiplicity. Now it could be two, it could be four, it could be six, it could be eight, but if you know it's a cubic, you know that it's two. It couldn't be four or greater because it's a cubic. The highest power is three. Here we see a quartic. See how negative two is a zero twice? It has multiplicity two. If I plug in negative two in that parentheses, I get zero. Then the other parentheses, plugging in one creates zero. So one also has multiplicity two. Take a look at the graph. See that mini parabola that's created right there? That's at negative two. And this other one, there we are at one. See the little mini parabola that's created? That tells us again that it has even multiplicity. This polynomial equation has highest degree six. How do I know that? Because this is x minus one times x minus one times x minus one four times. And if I foiled all that out, somewhere in there I get an x to the fourth power. This other parenthesis is x plus two times x plus two. And in that parenthesis, I would have an x squared and x squared times x to the fourth would make a highest power of x to the sixth. x to the sixth, notice it's an even power. That tells you that the end behavior is gonna be the same as a parabola. Now again, that doesn't mean this is gonna be the same. This outside piece is gonna be the same. So that's what we're talking about here. The end behavior is the same as a parabola. Notice how negative two has multiplicity of two, and one has multiplicity of four. See the parabola that's created because of that even multiplicity? And look at the one. You get a little different U shape, but it is that U shape. It has multiplicity four. Even multiplicities make that U shape that you expect to see like in a parabola. This equation is a quintic. In the first set of parentheses, I have x plus two times x plus two because it's squared, that'll be an x squared. In the second set of parentheses, I have x minus one times x minus one times x minus one, which will create an x cubed. An x squared times an x cubed will make a highest power of x to the fifth. Notice that's odd. I expect the end behavior of a cubic, which looks like this. I already pointed out that when you have multiplicity one, that the graph will just cross at that point. When you have an odd multiplicity, this is our first, greater than one, it's right here. That is one, x equal one is your zero there it bends. When you have a multiplicity that's odd, greater than one, it bends. Think of a cubic right here. 
So that tells me this has multiplicity 3, but it could be 5, it could be 7. I know it's odd. It's probably 3. In fact, I know it's 3, right? It's right there. And this one, this is negative 2. It has multiplicity 2, and again, you get that little parabola shape. So the thing to learn from this graph, when you have multiplicity 1, the, the line would just cross the x-axis. When you have an odd multiplicity greater than 1, you get that bending shape like you'd see in just a plain old normal cubic, the bend being right there. This graph is a chordic. The way I know that is because the first parenthesis has an x, the second one because x minus 1 quantity cubed, x is cubed, it'll be x cubed times x, which will make a highest power of x to the fourth. The end behavior then is an even type. It's the same as a parabola. We expect the end behavior of a parabola. That means as x is going to positive infinity, y is going to positive infinity. As x is going to negative infinity, y is going to positive infinity, just like a parabola, exactly. Take a look at the zeros. Negative 2 has multiplicity 1. See how it just crosses at negative 2? And 1 has multiplicity 3 because it's a factor 3 times. See again how it bends. When you have an odd multiplicity greater than 1, you get that bending like occurs in a plain old normal cubic. In this graph, the highest power would be x to the sixth, because x minus 1 quantity to the fifth power would create a highest power of 5, times another x would make a highest power of 6. We're expecting the end behavior of a parabola, because it's an even power. That's that and that. Notice that negative 2 has multiplicity 1. See how it just crosses at negative 2? And 1 has multiplicity of 5. Remember what I said. When you have an odd multiplicity greater than 1, you get that bending like you get with a cubic. This equation has a highest power of x to the fifth. I know that because this will create an x squared. This would create an x squared times another x would make an x to the fifth. It's an odd power. I expect the end behavior of a cubic. That's that and that. Notice how negative 1 has multiplicity of 2 because it occurs as a factor twice. Notice that 1 has multiplicity of 2 also. And negative 3 has multiplicity of 1. It occurs as a factor once. See at negative 3 how it just crosses? It has multiplicity 1. See how negative 1 right here has multiplicity of 2? You get that little parabola shape. And again, at 1, you get a little parabola shape because it has multiplicity 2 also. Here are some questions from your assignment. Question 1. For the function graphed above, the end behavior is on the right side. That's what right hand means. As x goes to the right, that says x goes to positive infinity. By the way, to get infinity in WAMAP, type lowercase o, lowercase o. So this is positive infinity, or just infinity is fine. What This is y. What does y do? Well, it goes down, so it would go to negative infinity. Left hand on the left side, as x goes to negative infinity, as I go to the left on the x-axis, y goes down, so y would go to negative infinity also. This is a reflected parabola, reflected and also shifted. Question two is an odd power. If it had been positive, it would have gone this way. But 
it's reflected over the x-axis. So this is a negative, probably a y equal negative x cubed. And as x goes to, let's change colors. As x goes to the right side, as I go to positive infinity, so as x goes to infinity, this is y. y goes down, it goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to the left, as x goes to negative infinity, y goes up. It goes to positive infinity. And you're, it's probably not going to want you to put a positive in there. Question six. This one's a cubic. I know that because this first set of parentheses will make an x squared when I FOIL it. It'll be times another x, which will make a highest power of x cubed. A cubic looks like that. This is what we expect, so that we already know what the end behavior is. The only exception would be if it was reflected, that there'd be a negative in front. It's not. So this is the graph we expect. The y-intercept. Let's remember something. We did this earlier. If I have an equation like 3x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2x minus 10, I know that if I'm looking for the y-intercept, that I don't go left or right, that x is 0. For the y-intercept, x is 0. And if I take an equation, this is just an example below right here, and I plug in 0, notice what happens, 3 times 0 cubed plus 5 times 0 squared minus 2 times 0, you probably already know what's going on, minus 10. Look what happens, y will be negative 10. In other words, if this was all foiled out, we would see the y-intercept there at the very end of the equation. It's not foiled out, though, and you don't really need to. But you do need to understand what happens when you FOIL. If I FOIL, this will be x plus 4 times x plus 4, and then times an x plus 7. The constant term at the end, this number, will come from 4 times 4, times 7, which is 16 times 7. 16 times 7 is 112. The y-intercept then will be x is 0, y is 112. You can foil that out if you want. The x-intercept you can tell just by it being factored. I know what the zeros are. Zeros are x-intercepts. And the x-intercepts are negative 4. It occurs twice. We shouldn't have to list it twice unless it tells us, and this question does not. Negative 4 and negative 7. And negative 4, by the way, has multiplicity 2. Now, I just noticed it says the points. These aren't points. It's not an order pair. I was listing them. Some of our earlier assignments did that. We need to fix this. For the x-intercept, we know that y is 0. Negative 4, 0 is our first one. And I suppose it probably wants a comma. And our second one was negative 7, 0. As x goes to infinity, what does y do? Remember that we expect a normal cubic because it's not reflected. So this is what it would look like right here. And as x goes to, let's change colors, as x goes to the right, as x goes to positive infinity, I know that y will go up, y will go to positive infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, y will go to positive infinity. And don't put a plus there. Just if there's no plus, it's positive infinity. And on the left, as x goes to negative infinity, y goes down, y goes to negative infinity. Same exact end behavior as any other cubic, as long as it's not reflected. Question 7, notice the odd power. Notice that it's not reflected. There's no negative in front. We expect this to look very much like a cubic. 
the end behavior will be the same as a cubic. As x goes to positive infinity, as I go to the right, y will go up, y will go to positive infinity. And on this side, as x goes to the left, as x goes to negative infinity, y will go down, y will go to negative infinity. The way they listed it then, they're using r. As r goes to negative infinity, y, this is y, y would go to negative infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. This question is asked a slightly different way. They say long run behavior. This is just end behavior. There's no difference. And they're using different variables, but that doesn't matter. This will have a p squared in it when I FOIL it. This will have a p squared, and this will have a p cubed when I FOIL it. That'll make a highest power of p to the seventh, which means it's odd. And notice there's no negatives mixed in. So we're going to expect the end behavior of a normal cubic which means as it's p here, not x, but as p goes to the right, you think of x, as p goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity, because y will go up. As x goes to the right, y will go up. We're using p instead of x. As p goes to negative infinity, meaning I'm going to the left, y will go to negative infinity also because I'm going down. So as p goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. As p goes to positive infinity, y will go to positive infinity. And you don't, if you're entering it, don't enter the plus because if there's no plus, it's considered positive. Here we have the highest power being even. We expect the end behavior of a parabola when it's even. Notice the negative that will reflect it. So our parabola, which would have been like this, as far as end behavior goes, will end up being flipped upside down. Now this is not what the graph will look like, but the end behavior will be the same. There'll be stuff going on in the middle, more zeros, but, we know that this is what we're looking at when we describe the end behavior. So let's, let's look at that. Reflected parabola end behavior. As x goes to the right, as it goes to positive infinity, y goes down, y goes to negative infinity. As I go to the left, as x goes to negative infinity, y goes down, y goes to negative infinity also. Notice that it says statements. As x goes to positive infinity, y goes to negative, positive, negative, that'd be this one. And as x goes to negative, y goes to negative, which is this one. So I have to select both of those. In question 14, we're going to come up with the equation for this graph. We can look and see that this one has multiplicity 1. This has multiplicity 1 because they just cross. This one has even multiplicity, probably 2. And in fact, look, 1 multiplicity, 2. That'll make x, and this will make an x squared. It'll be x cubed. And then one more makes an x to the fourth. So it appears that this is a quartic which means I'm expecting the end behavior of a parabola, which is what I have upside down reflected. That means there's going to be a negative in front. So let's throw a negative in there. I know that x plus 2 is one factor because x equal negative 2 is a 0. If I plug in negative 2, I get 0. I know that 0 is a 0 twice. So that means x minus 0 would be one factor, and I'm not going to leave it that way. And it would occur twice. That's why I have that parabola as multiplicity 2. And this one has multiplicity 1, and that's x minus 2. 
because it just crosses. And notice that if I plug in x equal 2 right here, I get 0. Now let's write this a little bit differently. We have the negative because it's reflected. It's flipped over. I'm going to put the x squared, that's this part here in front. And then I have x plus 2 and x minus 2. And there's my answer. Now the way to double check this is plug this in Desmos and make sure it makes that graph. Theoretically, they could throw in a compression or a stretch and we'd have a number in front there. But on these first ones, I didn't do that. This appears to be a chordic to me. I'm, the end behavior is the same as a parabola. Got this stuff going on in the middle here. Notice how it bends. That means it has odd multiplicity greater than 1. In other words, x plus 1, that's when x equal negative 1 is a 0. That's right there. It occurs probably three times because this looks like a chordic. And 2 is a 0, which means my factor is x minus 2. Notice if I plug in x equal 2 there, I get 0. And this looks like my equation, as long as I don't have a stretch or anything else going on. One way to check that, by the way, and know that you're correct, is take a look at where this crosses at x equal negative 2. If I plug in uh, x equals 0, I should end up with y equal negative 2. And notice how if I take this graph, y equal 0 plus 1 cubed times 0 minus 2 ends up being 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2. In other words, if I plug in 0, I get negative 2. This is absolutely the correct equation. Question 21 is a little funny. And the reason is, is that these zeros were so close together. But if I zoomed in on it, I would get a graph that did this down here near the bottom. And the thing to realize is that these two points have even multiplicity. See the mini parabola there? You can't really see it right here, but that's what's going on. So negative 2 appears to be a 0 twice, which means my factor is x plus 2. Plug in negative 2 and you get 0. The second factor comes from a 0 of negative 1, which means my factor is x plus 1. If I plug in negative 1, I get 0. And again, it was a little mini parabola. Can't really see it here very well. That's because we're, we'd have to zoom in to see it, to make it look like that. And it occurred twice. And notice I end up with a chordic. This will make an x squared. This will make an x squared. x squared times x squared will make a highest power of 4. A way to double check your answer is it should cross the y-axis at 4. If I plug in x equals 0, I should end up with y equals 4. We can check this very quickly. y equals 0 plus 2 squared times 0 plus 1. Now I should get y equals 4 from that. y will equal, that's 2 squared, which is 4 times 1, which is 4. If I plugged in 0, I got 4. This is absolutely the correct answer. These last two questions have either a stretch or a compression also. Start out like you did with the others. Notice how negative 2 has multiplicity 2, probably, because of that little parabola there. So I get y equals, that's x plus 2 quantity squared. Here, 1 has multiplicity 1. That'll be x minus 1. When I plug in 1, I get 0. When I plug in negative 2 and x plus 2 squared, I get 0. And I have another multiplicity of 1 at 3, which is x minus 3. If I plug in 3, I get 0. This looks to be the correct equation, but it actually isn't. The way to tell that is take this point and make sure that you get it using that equation. 
In other words, if I plug in x is 0, I should end up with y equal negative 2. Let's see what happens. y equals, we'll plug in x is 0, 0 plus 2 squared times 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 3. Well, this is 4 times negative 1 times negative 3. y is 12. When I plug in 0, I get 12, but I'm supposed to get negative 2. So all you have to do is ask yourself, what do I do to 12 to make that negative 2? Divide it by 6? Divide it by negative 6? Or how about multiply by negative 1 6? If I multiply by negative 1 6, that 12 becomes negative 2. And in fact, that's the equation. y equal negative 1 6 times x plus 2 squared times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Crazy. One more example like the last. Negative 2 has multiplicity 1. So that makes a factor of x plus 2. 1 appears to have multiplicity, see the parabola, of 2. So x minus 1 squared. And this does look like a cubic. I have x times x squared makes x cubed. I'm supposed to get 4 if I plug in x is 0. If I plug in x is 0, I'm supposed to get y equal 4. Well, let's see what happens. y equals 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1 squared, which equals 2 times 1, because 0 minus 1 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1, negative 1 times negative 1. In other words, y equals 2. And I was supposed to get 4. So when I plug in 0, I got 2. But that 2 is actually supposed to be 4. What do I have to do? I have to take the 2 and stretch it, right? And I have to multiply it by 2. That means the equation, the correct answer here, is y equal 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 1 squared.